Welcome, travelers. Please, pull up a chair, grab yourself a beverage, and I'll tell you the tale of Unquit the Turtle in his own words. You see, this tale begins unlike most. Our friend Unquit has woken up in a strange new world. Places that he doesn't know, peoples he doesn't know, a history he doesn't know, and his god doesn't exist. How will Unquit deal with all of this while he wakes in Eberron? Let's find out. Wandering the forest, he found an unlikely pair, Iridemos, the Minotaur Bard, and Archimedes, the Owl and Fighter. Together, they traveled around and formed a little band and performed at a few inns for, you know, for their stay, for their food, and one day they were given some tickets, which is where this tale will begin. Using the tickets Iridemos, Archimedes, and I got from a performance, we boarded a train. We were on a trip from Breland to Sharn, on the Lightning Rail. We settled into the dining car where the sights and smells of food were overwhelming. I was paying attention to the food as much as I was to the people consuming it. There were about a dozen others in the car. There was a changeling in the corner, watching others changing their face to match who they were watching. They tried to copy my face. They couldn't, and it seemed to surprise them a little bit. They weren't eating. Odd. There was a male dwarf dancing with a female grey gnome, a type of gnome that I've never seen before. And they seemed to be enjoying each other's company more than the food. Also odd, there was a male elf sitting in a booth with a robot woman who was wearing a ring on each of his fingers and seemed like he was above the available food, yet he was still in this car. The robot woman had nine eyes, eight in a semicircle, and one right in the center. She was very attentive to everyone and what they were doing. There was a suspicious man beside the door leading out of the car who seemed to be sleeping with a hat over his face. Who comes to the dining car to sleep? Isn't that what your rooms are for? Finally, there was a couple of monks, one male and one female, both eating and it smelled new. It smelled of some spice, a combination of spices that I had never smelled before. I asked for a bite and immediately regretted it. The flavor of the sauce was amazing for sure, but it had beef in it. I should have listened. I don't eat anything that's as big as me or bigger, and cows are usually bigger than me. I spat it out and his companion looked like they were ready to knock me out. Like she dealt with this all the time and was just tired of it. While spitting out the food, a bugbear and a few kobolds entered the car from the rear. The bugbear and a couple of the kobolds went to the front where the sleeping man was, while a couple of kobolds waited at the back. They locked the doors, then they started demanding that everybody give them everything of value. One kobold from the front and the back of the car started walking around with sacks collecting the goods from patrons. I looked at my friends and they looked at me, we weren't sure just what to do yet. One of the monks stood up, walked over to the kobold and just punched him! Didn't ask him anything! When that happened, the kobold at the back opened the door, yelled for help, and a human and another kobold stepped in. With the chaos that was created, I decided it was time. I used a power that I had accidentally had bestowed upon me, a story for another time, to appear in front of the bugbear. I asked him in his own language, again, another story for another time, why they were doing this, and I said that they should stop. He looked so confused, not only that I spoke his language, but also at my appearance. Maybe it was just because I appeared in front of him. He told me that it, this was above him and that I should give him everything of value. Something like that. At that point, my comrades joined the fight. Between the five of us, the monks, Iridemus, Archimedes, and I, we took care of everyone. And by took care, I unfortunately mean killed. I would have preferred less death, but they unfortunately set out looking for it even though they did not seem to fear it. During the fight, I noticed something interesting. The robot woman was going to stand up and join us, but the wealthy elf man stopped her just by motioning with his hand. Is she a bodyguard, maybe? We'll find out. Once they were all unfortunately killed, the monks Iridemus and Archimedes searched their bodies for any clues. I believe the male monk found something, but he and his friend ran off to another car very quickly, the sleeping man was the only one gone. I didn't even notice him leave. Maybe they went looking for him. I never did ask about that. I should have. 
But while they were gone, I collected all the bodies. I can't just leave them here. Everyone deserves a funeral rite. Any death I witness or assist in, I must perform a funeral rite on, if no other is given. It's part of my religion, it's part of my upbringing, and the Lord of the Dead speaks how every living being deserves to be ushered into the fugue plane with a funeral. I finished collecting the bodies together just as the monks had come back. The wealthy elf had stood up and came over to us, saying we put on quite a display and he has need of those with our particular skills. I believe he means that we can defend ourselves and others quite well. I'm not quite sure if I can trust someone who only judges on those skills. I'll keep an eye on him for now. But I'm in a strange land and I could use some high standing allies. I feel this man could help me find the answers of how I got here and where here is. He wants us to go to an abandoned Warforge factory. That's what the robot people are called, apparently. It's owned by House Caneth. We need to meet him in the upper ward of Tavik's Landing the next day around lunch, at a place called Ridden Spirits for more details. One of those monks found a ring that belonged to the dwarf earlier. He proposed to the gnome, and we all cheered when she said yes. Eridemos, Archimedes, and I, we all started playing a jaunty tune in celebration. It wasn't perfect. But everyone was happy. We need more practicing playing together if we're going to keep playing together like this. But we were finally at our destination. I stepped out and I was in awe. Every direction I looked, there was more city. There were several levels up, down, to the left, to the right. It was like we were in a city, within a city, surrounded by cities, built within more cities. I'm going to take all that in later. Right now, I need to get deal with these guys. I immediately went to a nearby stable and bartered a deal to borrow a cart so I could find somewhere to perform the ritual rites. I loaded the bugbear, human, and five cobalt and covered them with a blanket. I'm a holy man, but I don't need others to see them in this way. We set out looking for a shrine, temple, cemetery. I wasn't too picky, but clearly the woods was out of the question. The monks stayed with my friends and I, and we learned their names, Alice and Cain. Alice doesn't seem to like me very much, and Cain seems to be looking for trouble. We'll see if I can trust them, and let them know that I'm not from here, and not just the city. But while we were looking, a few guards stopped us and asked what we were doing. As I was trying to explain, everyone else kept interjecting, and the guards just kept getting confused. They finally just let us be, told me where to go to find a shrine, and we headed there. And I saw some air and fire genasi performing sermons, intending to the needs of others. One came up to me and asked what I needed. They looked very shocked when I said that I wanted to perform a funeral rite. But again, the others were butting in and confusing them, and they just made me look suspicious. They almost weren't going to let me, and just as I had convinced this genasi to let me perform my rituals, I saw Alice trying to light the cart on fire. I really don't think I can trust her. We were taken to an area where I could perform my funerals and I laid them all out. I put a piece of copper over each of their eyes, a sprinkle of salt around their bodies and lit a candle near the top of their heads. Now I was ready to usher them into the astral sea to be received by Kelimvor, Lord of the Dead. I stood up near them, saw a crowd had formed. My companions stood off to the side but there were many that were interested in what I was doing. This was very pleasing to me. Maybe I would be able to bring more followers to the Lord of the Dead and his teachings. I held up my hands and began reciting that which I have been preaching for years. Death is but part of life. Fear it not, evade it not, and view it not as evil. To fear death delivers you into the hands of those who can bring death down upon you. Die with dignity neither raging nor seeking to embrace undeath. Do honor the dead, for their strivings in life brought Faerun to where it is now, and to forget them is to forget also where we are now and why. During this, many looked disgusted and walked away. Others had a look of shock, and some were just plain confused. I nodded to the priest and said that I was done and they were ready for burial or cremation, whatever religious practices that they do here in the city. I don't think they were impressed with what I did either, or what I said. It's weird that nobody knows of Kelmvor around here. I'm clearly not in Faerun anymore. I'd finished the funeral rites, and we headed back towards the station so I could return my cart. 
Someone else mentioned lodging, and I wanted food. I'm hungry. We saw that changeling again. They were entering a place called Velvets with a lot of blue and purple lights. But he still couldn't do my face. He tried, and he smiled, and he chuckled. Kane and Alice wandered inside for a little bit. And they came back out pretty quickly. This did not look like a place for a holy man. I headed off to return the card on my own, while everyone else went to a nearby inn, the Tooth and Nail. When I entered, I saw Kane fighting a robot man. But he was only half robot. It was in a caged ring of sorts, and people were cheering. This looked very consensual, so I just grabbed some food and joined my friends. Kane spoke to the man after, and then we all headed to our rooms for the night. We all woke up, we had our breakfast, and we headed out to find this Tavik's Landing. It took all morning, but we found where we needed to go. We learned the wealthy elf's name is Adonis Almiraj, and he gave us the details of what we needed. He told us where the factory was, and that we needed to find a halfling researcher at an excavation site and get his possessions back. He told us to keep an eye out for dragon shards. I don't know what those are, but I do know that dragons are bad news for everyone. He also said that the pink ones are particularly valuable, but there's no such thing as pink dragons. Are there? And that'll conclude the story for today. Be sure to come back, and I'll tell you more of the story another time. Hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to do these bi-weekly, get them out before the next session. Um, I am going to try to record these a little bit sooner after they actually happened, so that way the story's a little more fresh in my head. Uh, please feel free to let me know down below what you liked, what you didn't like, what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of. Uh, this video is going to be less on the editing side. I do want to start throwing up some like pictures and stuff and give a little more ambiance, I guess, into what's going on. Um, so yeah, please let me know what you did and did not like, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Unquit's story. Uh, that was like four or five hours of D&D condensed down into however long this video is going to be, 10-15 minutes, I don't know, I haven't edited it yet, it's actually right in front of me. Uh, but yes, thank you so much, and I will hopefully see you guys again shortly. See ya! Ah, welcome traveler. I've already fucked that up. <clears throat> Been a while since I've had to record something, okay? Give me a minute. I don't remember how I started that. Irimides? Irimides? This is gonna be hard to edit. Irimides. Irimides. You're a modas. I should have scripted this part too. Irudumo. There was a male elf sitting in a booth. Boot. Spice, 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 spice. I saw some air and fire genasi performing some. This is was very pleasing. Death is but part of life. Fear it not. Evade it not. And fear it not. Death is part of life. Fear it not, evade it not, and view it not as evil. <clears throat> Adonis Almirish. Adon Adonis Al 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 Adonis Al Miraj. 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 And that'll conclude today's step. And that'll conclude today's telling. And that'll conclude the story for today. Be sure to tune in again so we can continue the story of Unquit the Turtle. And this is fucking bullshit!